welcome back friends we are talking about industrial microbiology and we have seen what is industrial microbiology and uh, what are the different steps of production of some industrial product utilizing microorganisms now we have seen uh, the three steps three important steps for the production and also we have noticed uh, the ferment uh, fermenter and the properties of fermenters now in this video we will be talking about different type of bioreactors the bioreactors are another name of the fermenters inside which all the chemical reactions are going on so it's the simply changing of substrate into products uh, by the presence of microorganisms okay so let us talk about it now type of bioreactors will vary according to the type of uh, fermentation that were, that we are need we need to carry out right so for example batch fermenters uh, continuous fermenters and recycle reactors would be there so here for example here we are having this batch fermenter this is a batch fermenter this is a continuous fermenter and this is a recycle fermenters okay so we'll be talking about batch fermentation continuous fermentation and recycling fermentations later but now in this video we'll be looking at each of the different type of bioreactors what are their major features what are their major advantages and disadvantages now here is the first uh, we have seen the steer tank bioreactor now in the previous video where you have discussed about the typical industrial bioreactor we have seen the example of stirred tank bioreactor now stirred tank tank bioreactor is involved in the process of production of those things which require agitation uh, and mixing of air so we have seen it so let me take a color first we have already seen this now what we left with is four different kinds air lift bioreactors plug flow bioreactor packed bed bioreactor and a modified modified plug uh, packed bed bioreactor which is called the fluidized bed bioreactor now here uh, all the different aspects of a bioreactor will remain the same in all the different kind that means uh, we must have an inlet and outlet we must have a ph sensor and also we must have the presence of oxygen or sometimes the absence of oxygen it could be ha having agitator or not having any agitator but it must be sterile and it is it must be kept sterile and these things and contingency levels uh, must be there throughout the throughout the different type of fermenters uh, containment levels throughout the fermenters must be there now in this case it will vary in their properties now depending upon the type of substrate we can use depending upon the, the product we want to get we will vary we will switch to one type of fermenter to another type of fermenters now here say the first one air lift bioreactor now air lift bioreactor are similar to the bubble column reactors but they differ in the fact that they contain a draft tube for example say this is a large tube inside which we are having a small hollow tube now what happens here the name suggests air lift that means air is lifting all the nutrients from one place to another place now here it must have one gas distributor so here is the air inlet through which air is coming in and this air is moving and it is taking nutrients with it for example say here are gel beads are there so gel beads are present there so the air is moving from this direction so say here on air is going like that and it is circulating down and then again going up like that so it's a continuous circulation of air for example in this picture it is much more clear air is moving inside this hollow tube the second hollow tube and then it is coming out uh, from the top and then it is going going down again so this thing is having this rotation is going on for this type of air lift by reactor now for this type of bioreactor there must be proper mixing of air with this uh, medium and also temperature regulator is there also thermal regulator is there everything is there this is an example of lab scale bioreactor in this case as you can see see this 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 uh, this outer tube is much more bigger in diameter this small uh, thin diameter contain inner tube is there in, onto which we are having this liquid medium and it is just circulating like that so air is lifting all the nutrients and circulating it so that's why we call them air lift by reactor there are a lot of advantages by using this air lift by reactors that uh, we are having a it ensures adequate mixing because air is coming throughout the time right 
in circulatory flow in the entire reactor is possible so proper mixing and agitation can be obtained now energy consumption for this type of bioreactor is pretty low and we can use this airlift bioreactors for both free and immobilized cells so if you are having free cells or immobilized cell in both the cases we can use this type of bioreactor okay and it is ideally suited for aerobic cultures remember because we are having tons of air which is mixed with this medium all the time so it is suited for aerobic cultures but it is not suited for those cultures which will require anaerobic bacteria okay now here the oxygen mass transfer coefficient are quite high so that's why it must be carried out uh, in the presence of aerobic microorganisms now it they are advantages to different cell cultures so these are pretty good applications pretty good advantages of airlift bioreactor so we can utilize the airlift bioreactor bi uh, for uh, for conversion of substrate into product by the presence of aerobic microorganisms now airlift bioreactor here you can see in the lab scale this is the design of airlift bioreactor with the machines and all this now here this is a place where you can see that in in the previous case of airlift bioreactor here is uh, the tubing here is a hollow tube having large diameter than the small diameter tube so air is circulating throughout the time and this thing is modified to make a loop like structure so it's an airlift bioreactor but having a loop instead of having a small tube inside we are having the tube outside this is the simple difference otherwise everything remains the same so we are having a sparger through from which the air is coming out and mixing in and this air is going through this loop so lot of air is going and mixing at this region but very few amount of air is managed air is managed to go at this direction because air is having a tendency to go upward because it is lighter than the water and the medium so a very few amount of air can move to this place and they can come now in this typical example of airlift loop by reactor we are utilizing uh, glucose syrup and we are injecting glucose syrup because this glucose syrup can act as a nutrient source here and rest of the system remains the same so we must have an inlet and outlet we must have a sampling port we must have a temperature regulator here is utilizing a cooling system so these things must be there containment level must be maintained but all the rest of the things will vary now this the, the actual mechanism of this is using air as an agent of mixing the medium properly okay so that the aerobic microorganisms can grow and convert the substrate into the desired